Okay, did confession time, it's it's gotta be something in regards, it's gotta be Nintendo related. So with this, and it's weird because I feel like when I grew up, I always had knowledge of Nintendo stuff. I remember playing Mario 64 when it was in an Argos when I was like five or six or however old I would have been. Um, you know, I can't think of my age off the top of my head. I was a tiny little child and I played Mario 64. But my main thing to confess is that ultimately, I never had a Nintendo home console until the Switch because I always, I grew up playing Nintendo systems at my friend's house. I was a Sega kid, a PlayStation kid, um, an Xbox kid. And so, you know, it was like, it was playing the Mar it was playing Nintendo 64 at a friend's house. It was playing Mario Kart at a friend's house. It was, you know, look, like hearing about Wind Waker and then playing, seeing my, one of my friends play it at a friend's house. And it wasn't until, um, like I said, I, I grew up with the, the Game Boys and uh, Game Boy Advance and stuff, and I was playing Pokemon growing up, but I never had a Nintendo home system, a home console, um, until the Switch. And that meant that, you know, my first full Mario is Mario Odyssey. My first full Zelda is Breath of the Wild. And I hadn't played Smash Brothers really until Smash Brothers Ultimate. And so it's kind of, it's that whole thing. I feel like there's this whole, you know, sense of experience that just didn't, it's not there because I didn't grow up with them. I did and I didn't, you know? Like, I think that's the confession is that I wish that I was more hands-on with those original systems. Um, you know, the NES, the SNES, obviously they predate me on this earth in regards to <laughs> some of them. Um, but I feel like I should have played a lot more of them when I was growing up. It's not that I didn't come across Super Mario World when I was a kid. And it's not that I didn't come across, you know, X, Y, Z important thing but I also didn't play those things when I was growing up. I only went back to them with the NES Mini, the SNES Mini, um, or in the regards to Breath of the Wild, I went back to the original Zelda then um, and played it on an emulator, but I didn't finish it. Um, and so yeah, first home Nintendo system, it's, it's honestly the Switch and like all those other games, I only went back and actually finished all of those games on the Switch or, or, or through the mini systems. Uh, Super Mario World hadn't finished that until like a year ago or two years ago, whenever the, whenever the mini came out. Um, Super Metroid, same thing. Um, it's gotta be that. It's this whole like chunk of Nintendo stuff that I just, just didn't in interact with myself for prolonged periods of time as I was growing up. And it was only when I got the Switch and got all those access points as I grew up that I was like, no, I'm clearly missing out on all this stuff and I'm gonna dive the hell in and finally slot all those things in to my overall play library. Okay, so my video game confession is one that I know is gonna just piss off Osley quite a lot and I'm so, so sorry, man. But I just don't really understand eSports or what it is or anything about it, which absolutely sucks because obviously, you know, it's a huge part of gaming culture and the industry at large. You know, so much money is pumped into eSports and tournaments, and, you know, big events, and you know, people love this stuff. Like, people are so, invested into it and there is so much passion and vigor surrounding it that I just can't connect to and I wish I could connect to it because it's totally ignorance on my part this entire scene just passed me by and now it's this you know multi-million dollar thing that exists in the space that I am employed in and yet there's such a disconnect and it's just not a part of you know the type of games that we cover on this channel I guess or at least I cover on this channel and which is why I don't talk about it because I don't fully understand what goes on you know both at the events and behind the scenes and stuff and it it completely sucks like obviously people love this like Osley loves this stuff you know what I mean people other people that I work with love this stuff and they talk about it with such passion and stuff and such knowledge and I just don't have it and I respect them so much and I want to be a part of it but I just don't know how at this point because I don't know how you just get into something like this like on paper, this should be my kind of thing. I like sports, I like electronic things. So if you bring those things together, you get eSports and it's just an entire part of the industry that I know nothing about. It's all empty up here uh, and that's a shame, but uh, I feel, you know, a bit weird even admitting this on camera now, to be honest, because I know so many people like it. And I know it's kind of silly for someone involved in games to not really know anything about it, but that is my confession. Forgive me, commenters, for I have sinned. I know nothing about <laughs> video game esports. Not a single thing. So a video game confession that I guess I would struggle to admit, <laughs> just because people always 
take the mick out of me for it and that's that I like to play games on easy I, I especially if it's a game that I know has a good story I like going in and experiencing the story that's a whole point of easy mode like a lot of time when you click on the easy option it literally comes up saying oh this is a mode that has like hardly any combat or anything like that and it's just based on the story I'm sorry, but I like stories in video games, okay? Like, yes, the action and stuff is good, you know, when, like, talk about one of my favourite games like Bioshock and Dishonored, the action is brilliant, the weapons are awesome, you know, you have some really unique sort of fighting styles there and weapons, but they have fantastic stories and it takes me a long time for me to play these games on a different difficulty. I have only just recently started playing through Dishonored and doing things differently such as playing it on medium or hard difficulty and doing things like trying to be undetected because I've got to that point now where I've gone through every story, every option that I possibly can and I'm happy, okay? I'm happy and when I'm once I'm happy then I will move on but I don't want to risk missing any part of the story. I enjoy good stories in video games. I enjoy the plot. Yes, I am one of those people that plays games for their plot and to for their stories and to progress within the story, okay? I'm sorry if that's not your thing, but yes, I will always play a game on easy and um, yeah, I, I feel like maybe I should be, uh, uh, the only reason that I think I struggle to admit that is because whenever I pick the easy option, everyone's always like, oh easy, oh god, come on, challenge yourself a little bit. Yes, I will, once I know what is going on within the game, okay? I want to know the characters, I want to know what they're like, I want to know the story, okay? And once I've done that 50 times, then I might consider upping the ante a little bit. But yeah, um, I like playing on easy. <laughs> oh, this is really bad because I know how much of a bad opinion this really is, but I just find Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast to be just an incredible game. And it's really bad because I know how dreadful the animations and the acting are. Like, it hasn't aged at all, like, well at all, but it's there's just something about the game that I just absolutely love and I really don't know what it is maybe it's just the mechanics maybe it's just you know the level design but everything about it just gives me so much nostalgia um, and it's probably down to the fact that, like the Dreamcast was my first proper console that I owned like myself as a kid um, and I'm not talking about like you know my mega uh, like the mega drive that my parents had and I just played all the time I'm talking about like the fact that it was actually gifted to me and it was my first console and the fact like when I was growing up con uh, video game consoles were a massive big deal to like my childhood and to have like that thing in my room and just playing it was awesome because Sonic Adventure was the only game that I played so much of and the fact like I love the story as well and especially oh what's that robot what's the name out uh, Alpha or Omega whatever it is <laughs> I really can't remember um, was was a really great story it just felt so emotional going through that and big the cat as well like i just i just don't mind him like his story was so pivotal to the actual like the whole thing really and i know he's a big dumb t you know shouting about his frog all the time but it's so ugh. i know jules is going to destroy me of having that opinion but i can't help but but feel that way you know I just like Sonic Adventure so much. Everything about it, like down to the casino level, the bloody snowboarding level, the, everything about it, even like jumping onto the ship at the, at the very end is just so cool, you know? And probably because it makes me feel like a kid again. I just loved playing that game so much, but you know what? I, I just don't care. It's my opinion. If you, uh, you probably disagree with me. I don't care if you do disagree with me, you know? I just know that I love that game a lot. Really? But yeah.